You've mentioned the eclecticness of the music you guys make, and I think it's just kind of like easy to assume that everybody wants to make music for the world and mm -hmm. make, you know, music that isn't just hip hop. But, you know, you touched on it. You, you touched on jazz, you touched on house, you touched on, uh, you know, Calypso. Yeah. You touched on Caribbean, you know, Caribbean church, music, church oh, yeah. music, everything, yes. you know. And when it comes to that, I feel like, you know, you mentioned the young artists like the Kodak Blacks, the Young Thugs. I think even Drake like posted a video of you on Instagram or well, a video of him rapping your verse on, on Ready or Not. On yeah, Instagram. he was 14 years old. 14 years old, right? So like the influence you've had on worldly music, especially when it comes to like, you know, culture clashing, you know, when did you realize that, okay, I don't have to just do this band, I don't have to just do hip hop, you know what I mean? Like one of your biggest songs is a song with, you know, Shakira, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? One of your biggest songs is a song with Carlos Santana. You have uh. this legendary run with the Fugees, you have mm -hmm. this legendary solo run. Like mm -hmm. when did you realize like, yo, I don't want to just touch my people. I want to just touch the hood. I want to touch the world. everybody. Well, I mean, remember at the gate when the Fugees came out, they wasn't calling us hip hop. They were saying we was alternative. Y'all the alternative that was the room, right? That, <laughs> that's the word that people use to say, well, you know, they're not really, they're safe. <laughs> they call, they call they're they're called every band with black people in an alternative. Yeah. Back in the you day. You know what I'm saying? Arrest, they, they, in the beginning, they was putting Fuji's and Arrested Development, yes. all of those groups. And like, there was like a word, like they just created. And you have to understand, this is what people do. They create these words to put you in a box. So or they create, they create young, boundaries. Yeah, like they create these boundaries. So for me, at a very young age, I didn't believe in boundaries. It was like sitting in a room trying to play Jimi Hendrix. You feel me? Mm -hmm. My brain could not. You know, I was watching the doc of Biggie Smalls, right? And then now, great doc. When yeah. Biggie's mom was talking about Caribbean music, right? So. So Biggie's, Biggie's mom was speaking about Western music and how she used to listen to country. And I was listening to country music too at a young age. And for me, you know, the idea of like coming from the Caribbean and being like a country kid and listening to Johnny Cash, then listening to Bob Marley, people felt like that was weird. But where we came from, that was just a natural thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, at a very young age, I would not be put in a box. Now, the idea of people describing that hip hop, you have to be hardcore. Now, let me flex for a second. Okay. Let me tell y'all something. Okay. Suge Knight showed up at my party when people was running from him just to take the microphone and to say, yo, this kid right here is the most respected kid that I've ever met face to face, right? I can wear my jewels in any hood. You can see me in Gun Hill Projects, prop park a McLaren right outside in the hood and walk inside, leave the keys in and come back outside, right? So I don't know how much more gangster you can be <laughs> than this, right? So the idea of saying, oh, for you to keep it real, I don't know how real, you know, we can keep it, right? Because keeping it real means helping the community. Yeah. Keeping it real means like trying to find a way. When you put, when I put my flag up, my flag was at the Grammys, 1996. Mm. This was my flag, right? At the end of the day, I respect the blue, the red, anybody, whatever. I don't even call it a gang. I call everybody part of a set, mm. a tribe. Yeah. It's a tribe, just yeah. so y'all know what it really is. Yeah. So when I put my tribe up in the air, it was to signal to the world, like at the end of the day, this is the first Black Republic of 1804. Y'all going to have to show some respect on this flag. Mm. So I don't know how much more gangster you can be. So I believe that the true gangster was Malcolm X. The true gangster was Marcus Garvey. We can't hear, we can't, you can't sit here and glorify the gunplay. You're talking to somebody that understands the gunplay. Mm -hmm. Somebody that removes the M16 from the hand of the gang and of the tribe and replaces it with a jar. So at the end of the day, this was the message of the Fuji's. Fuji's is short for refugees. Not just in the word, like we really have people who passed away in the Cuban waters trying to get to America. Right. So for me, 
this was the idea of like, we can't be in no box to do that. We got to be like you too in order to do that. Mm -hmm. So we was like, we are not going to be a hip hop group. We're going to be a hip hop band. So that's why you always see the instruments with the Fugees. Jesus Christ, yo. I, I just <laughs> Bro, I don't even want to ask another question because like that that's that, so, that, that I, right I there. got plenty. I mean, <laughs> I, got, I got plenty of questions, but it's just like I got plenty. This is this is uh, this is <clears throat> when you sit when you sit with a guy like that that can describe so many different intricate parts of the career, his life, his story, his band. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes you just want to sit and just listen. Like I don't even I just want to hear this nigga of talk. Course. I just want to just like hear <laughs> talk about this moment. Boom, this boom, true, man. True, <laughs> this true, no, that, that that's facts, uh, Clef. And 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 you mentioned it just before. You know, refugee Fuji's wasn't just a, a catchy name. Like y'all was really, you know, what I mean, you know, traveling from America to here. And obviously, you know, when it comes to Haiti, there isn't a whole lot more people that are more prominent than you that have mm -hmm. done so much for your country. First free black nation in, in, in world history independently. You know what I mean? Like, and even right now, there's a lot going on in Haiti. There's a lot going on in, 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 the, in, the, in the, the, the country that you call home. And I feel like a lot of people kind of look to you as not just an OG, not just as somebody who, um, you know, we, we enjoy as a music, but almost like a political figure as well. I mean, like you've done so much. You've put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. You've been there building stuff for Haiti. Um, talk to us about what's going on right, right now in your home country and how, you know, listeners of the show can either raise awareness and help and, you know, just, just be more aware of what's going on, especially people that look like us, sound like us and all that. Yeah. Well, th thank you, brother, for the, for this platform. The first thing that I want to say is I want everybody listening to remember the name Marcus Garvey. Mm. Marcus Garvey is important to what I'm about to tell you because J. Edgar Hoover, who set up the FBI organization, his whole plot was to destroy anything black relevance to movement. All Marcus Garvey wanted to do was organize the trade movement. And at the end of the day, he felt like, why couldn't we trade as a black man? So me, when I started my foundation, Yale Haiti, you have to understand, in less than 24 hours, I raised $10 million. So what does that mean? I get marked just like Marcus Garvey did by the Red Cross and any organization that's on that sort of level. Because you ain't going to be a black man and just show up and do stuff like that. So the first thing they did, and when I'm talking about it, at the end of the day, you got good organizations. You got people that's part of it. But I'm talking about how they infiltrate black folks. If you a black person, they just want you to sell liquor. They want you to sell clothes. They want, But yo, if you decide that you're going to make a political statement about anything, they say, nigga, we about to put you in your place. Which is so like, I mean, I which, which is pretty much niggas. what happened with, with Judas and the Black Messiah. Pretty much like you're saying. There you go. Same so at the thing. end of the day, facts. Mm. So I was like, I'm going to rise to the occasion. I ran for president of Haiti. I wanted to become president of my country. I ran for president. They took me out of the race. Y'all seen me like y'all saw tears in my eyes. There's memes like tears would be in your eyes, too, if you landed and saw 250,000 people under the rubble. And then a young kid is about to die and he looks at me and he says, yo, Clef, I need you to sing me a song. What do you know about that? Doing that transition where you literally gonna take someone to the next life. So I tell y'all this because when it comes to Haiti, I don't play, I bleed this flag up and down the same way Toussaint Louverture bleed it. So at the end of the day, where we at right now, Haiti faces trying times, but it has not faced it always faced trying times. So at the end of the day, in order for Haiti to rise, it's going to take everybody that's listening right here. Don't fall for the okie dokie. The mm. bottom line is 80 percent of the population is living on less than a dollar a day. The IMF, the World Bank, Haiti is still in debt. So in order for Haiti to really get freedom, we need to be out of the debt. Like, give us free. Like, just be like, yo. I need IMF World Bank. Just be like, yo, we're going to wipe the debt of this country completely and start it from scratch. Mm. So at the end of the day, this is what we need. Economical freedom. If 80 percent of a population is living on less than a dollar a day, how can you put a debt on me? So that's what we need. We need education. We need job creation. 
So these are the focuses that I'm focusing on right now. Um, and I will be announcing a peace concert that we're going to do down there in the next like two months. You know what I mean? So look out for that. And I look for the support of the artists, international artists coming out there. You know, literally we, we can go in if anybody is, you know, people be like Sugar Haiti. Literally, we could fly in that same day and y'all could fly out that night. But I need Haiti to feel that international community, the artists around the world, everybody that I work with. I need y'all just for that one day in that country so we could bring some peace to them. What's up, y'all? This is Kaz. Locate. Rosie. And thank you for checking out the Say Less podcast. Don't forget to check out every new episode on Monday on YouTube. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> <Mother> <laughs> <laughs>